What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in this tutorial, I wanted to get a little more in-depth with the extension FFD, which stands for Freeform Deformation. It allows you to create basically a control cage around your geometry so that you can deform it to create cool shapes. And before we get started, um, today's video brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials Tiny House Beginner Course. Um, this course is a course that I put together to really help people just go from start to finish learning how to use SketchUp and to do it um, instead of just uh, sitting and listening um, you follow along step by step so if you're a beginner you want to learn how to use SketchUp um, make sure you check out that course at the sketchupessentials.com slash tiny house now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so some of you may remember, and I'll link to this video in the notes down below, you may remember a video I did a while ago about an extension called FFD. And FFD, like I said before, stands for Freeform Deformation. And basically what it allows you to do is it allows you to deform or um, otherwise adjust a shape using a control cage. And so what it does is you can basically take a shape. So in this case, I've got like a cube and you make it into a group and then you go down to FFD so you right click on it you go down to FFD and you've got a few different options in here for grids that you can create so you can create a 2x2 two two, a 3x3 three three, or an n by n which allows you to set your own cage and so we're just gonna start off with something real simple we're gonna do a 3x3 three three FFD and so if you look at this when I do this what it did is now I've got all of these points in here that I can move around to adjust my G Geometry. And so what we're going to do is we're going to select a couple of these points and move them around and see what it does. And so one of the first tips that I want to talk about is the best way to do this is to actually double click on the FFD control points option that gets created or um, group that gets created in the outliner. So don't come in here and try to click on these points because they can be kind of hard to get your mouse on and a lot of the time you'll click and you'll get inside your group instead of your points. That's not really what you want. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to double click inside this group for FFD control points. And we're just going to select one of the points and we're going to move it and see what it does. So in this case, I'm just going to move this along the red axis. And you can see how when I move this along the red axis, what this does is this basically adjusts it basically deforms your shape based on where that new point is. So you can see how in this case it moved the vertex out. And so if I was to move it up, it would do the same thing. It would move the vertex up. And so this by itself in the cube isn't really super interesting, but it gives you an idea of the way this works. And the other thing to note is it's very important that your geometry gets subdivided when you do this. And when I say subdivided, what I mean is if I was to select because basically if I hide my cube, so let's take a look at this grid first of all. So basically this created a 3x3 three three grid of points that you can use to adjust your model. But if I unhide my cube and I select like this point in the middle and move it up, it's not going to do anything. And the reason it's not going to do anything is because this is just an uninterrupted face. So there's no points, no vertexes or anything like that that you're going to be able to adjust in here. So therefore FFD doesn't do anything and so that's an important thing to know is your objects need to be subdivided um, in order for this to work properly and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo out of this and I'm gonna use a different option in FFD and you just kinda have to be aware of what kind of shapes that you have in here but like for example if I right click on this cube I go to FFD instead of selecting 2x2 two two or 3x3 three three, if you go to the N by N option you can set your dimensions of your control cage, so I can do a 3x3x3, three by three by three. but if you select this option for subdivide, what that'll do is that'll subdivide your object into different faces so that this works differently. So if I say no, then it'll just add the grid like selecting 3x3 three three did, but if I say true and hit OK, you can see what that does is that splits my object up. So now if I click in here, you can see how this has split my object up into different faces. Well now, if I go in here, I double click inside my control points, and I move this up and down, the center of my box is going to adjust. And so now I can do that on all the different sides. And so what that does is that opens up a lot more interesting options for what you can do with your control cage. Like for example, if I was to select these lines, 
or these these objects so basically I just selected the whole center of this and then I used the scale tool and I uniform scaled this out you can see how that's gonna scale my whole box out because everything was subdivided in here and you could also do it where you could just do it along one side so I could scale the top down and leave the bottom the way that it is and you could use this to create really any kind of shape that you wanted to create and so let's move on to our next example all right, so now what I have is I have a plane over here that I've created using the sandbox tools. So I basically created a grid with the from scratch option, and then I used the smooth tool in order to uh, make this a little bit more organic. This is kind of something that I would use if I was creating site work or something like that. But if I come in here and I activate FFD, and let's say I just do a 3x3 three three FFD again, and then I double click inside that control points, you can see how because this object is basically already subdivided into a bunch of different planes you can come in here and you can adjust this however you want so you can adjust your points up and down um, if you wanted to you could take some of these points over here and you can move them across you could even rotate them so you can see how this shape is actually really good for FFD because it's already kind of pre subdivided so like for example if I was to come in here and draw a flat plane put that in a group and then try to run FFD on that one the only thing you could really do is move the edges around um, so if you move it up and down you can see how it's just gonna give you kind of a you can see how all it's basically doing is moving this line around like you don't have the vertices in here because this isn't subdivided so that subdivision when you're using FFD is really important um, so and one of the things that's kind of interesting about FFD is it doesn't really allow you to use the N by N with the subdivide on a flat face. So if I was to come in here and do the N by N, um, it's not going to let me do that on a flat face for some reason. I'm not really sure why. It usually creates this dice group option, but it won't actually give you anything that you can use in here um, in order to deform that face so on a flat face it's really only going to give you the option for the 2x2 two two or the 3x3 three three is really all that's going to work so a shape that FFD really works well on is a shape like a sphere and you wouldn't think that it would when you just look at this because this seems like an uninterrupted face but if you were to come in here and you were to run FFD on this one and let's say I did a 4x4 four by, four by 4 and I set my subdivide to false that'll give me a 4x4 four four grid in my object and then if I come in here and I use this and let's say I select the two ends and scale those out you can see how this scales really well as a or this deforms really well as an object and the reason for that is if you turn on hidden geometry and you take a look at this this is actually subdivided into different faces um, so if you go inside a sphere or a curved face this is actually what they look like in SketchUp they're already broken up into faces um, because they're basically made up of a series of flat faces in your object so like for example if I was to do a 3x3 three three FFD in here then I could bring this in to kind of a point and create almost like like a Hershey's Kiss candy type shape but you can see how that works really well because the hidden geometry is already in here so FFD has something that it can deform so because of the way this object is broken up it's really kind of an ideal object for working with FFD so you could kind of flatten the back end a little bit Oops. in order to create some different kinds of shapes so um, just be aware when you're working with FFD of that subdivision and how all of that works because that's gonna make a huge difference as to how well um, FFD works with an object so another series of shapes that this works really well on is this group of rings and the reason why is the exact same reason these rings are actually in here and they're already broken up because of the way it makes up these curved faces so like for example let's say that I did a 3x3 FFD on this one 
and I selected the control points over here and let's say that I scaled this up so I'm just taking this and I'm gonna scale these so that they're taller and you can see this is gonna take a while because of the number of faces that it has to deform but this works really well because it's already broken up into pieces that this can uh, incrementally scale upward so like for example if I was to scale this out this would work really well as well just because the way these faces are already broken up you can see how um, it's just naturally broken up by the way that the geometry is in your model this series of boxes is going to be kind of the same way and the reason for that isn't because each one of these faces is broken up properly because they're really not it's more because there's just so many of them and they're all kind of grouped together that uh, the deformation actually works pretty well so I'm gonna do a 3 by 3 FFD on this one and I'm just gonna select my control points and what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale these down and we're gonna move them out and so you can see that because there's so much geometry in here already um, this gives it a really natural set of geometry that it can kinda of deform and work with so you can see how like for example I could also come in here and I could rotate these control points this may be too much but you can see how you can rotate these control points and this is really working well just because of the amount of geometry in here now if you were to try to do this with one of the individual boxes it might not work as well because they're not broken up the way that you want them to be but you can see how this gives you a lot of cool kind of um, options for things that you could do you know I could scale this down in the middle if I wanted to to kind of adjust the way that that works you could also rotate these along here in order to make this more of a curving shape so as you can see depending on the way that your geometry is set up um, that's going to adjust the way things are going to work within FFD so the last example I'm going to use is if we create like a 12-sided circle so if I was to come in here and create a 12-sided circle and then push pull this up so basically what this is, this is a series of flat faces um, if I turn hidden geometry off it's just gonna look like a ring but if I was to take this and just kinda copy this up and let's say I copied it up using the move tool and I did it eh, we'll say six times and then I took this object and I right clicked on it and I made it a group and then I did FFD and let's say I think I still wanna give it a 3 by 3 width but let's say I gave it a height of like 7 and then I had this control cage what I could do is I could come in here and within each one of these I could do a uniform scale to the middle and you can see how this will let me create very gradual curves and the reason this is working the way that it's working is because if you look at the hidden geometry in here these are already kind of subdivided just based on the way that this works and so it gives FFD that proper that proper geometry to work with. So you can see how you could twist this a little bit to give this a little bit of a twisted shape. But you can see now that uh, the importance the important thing when working with FFD is getting an idea of the way that your geometry comes together. Once you figure out um, the way that your geometry is subdivided and how this is going to affect that, then you can really get kind of powerful using this extension. That's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Um, have you struggled with FFD before or did you have a pretty good handle on it? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.